Hello, son of gold, and my brother. This is the part 107 in the series Christ Forgiving Us How to Manifest Immortality Season 2. And today's teaching is This need not be. If you cannot hear the voice for gold, it is because you do not choose to listen. That you do listen to the voice of your ego is demonstrated by your attitudes, your feelings, and your behavior. Yet, this is what you want. This is what you are fighting to keep and what you are vigilant to save. Your mind is filled with sins to save the face of your ego and you do not seek the face of Christ. The glass in which the ego seeks to see its face, glass in which the ego seeks to see its face, is dark indeed. How can it maintain the trick of its existence except with mirrors? But where you look to find yourself is up to you. I have said that you cannot change your mind by changing your behavior. But I have also said, and many times, that you can change your mind. When your mood tells you that you have chosen wrongly, and this is so, whenever you are not joyous, then no, this need not be. In every case, you have thought wrongly about some brother God created and are perceiving images your ego makes in a darkened glass. Think honestly what you have thought that God would not have thought and what you have not thought that God would have you think. Search sincerely for what you have done and left undone accordingly and then change your mind to think with God. This may seem hard to do, but it is much easier than trying to think against it. Your mind is one with God's. Denying this and thinking otherwise has held your ego together, has held your ego together, but has literally split your mind. As a loving brother, I'm deeply concerned about your mind and need you to follow my example as you look at yourself and at your brother and see in both the glorious creations of a glorious father. When you are sad, no, this need not be. Depression comes from a sense of being deprived of something you want and you don't have. Remember that you are deprived of nothing except your own decisions and then decide otherwise. When you are anxious, realize that anxiety comes from the capriciousness of the ego and no, this need not be. You can be as vigilant against the ego's dictates as for them. When you feel guilty, remember that the ego has indeed violated the laws of God, but you have not. Leave the sins of the ego to me. That is what atonement is for. But until you change your mind about those whom your ego has hurt, the atonement cannot release you. While you feel guilty, your ego is in command because only the ego can experience guilt. This need not be. Watch your mind for the temptations of the ego and do not be deceived by it. It offers you nothing. When you have given up this voluntary dispiriting, you will see how your mind can focus and rise above fatigue and heal. Yet, you are not sufficiently vigilant against the demands of the ego to disengage yourself. This need not be. The habit of engaging with God and His creations is easily made if you actively refuse to let your mind slip away. The problem is not one of concentration. It is the belief that no one, including yourself, 
is worth consistent effort. Side with me consistently against this deception and do not permit this shabby belief to pull you back. The disheartened are useless to themselves and to me, but only the ego can be disheartened. Have you really considered how many opportunities you have had to gladden yourself and how many of them you have refused? There is no limit to the power of a son of God, but he can limit the expression of his power as much as he chooses. Your mind and mine can unite in signing your ego away or releasing the strength of God into everything you think and do. Do not settle for anything less than this and refuse to accept anything but this as your goal. Watch your mind carefully for any beliefs that hinder its accomplishment and step away from them. Judge how well you have done this by your own feelings for this is the one right use of judgment. Judgment, like any other defense, can be used to attack or protect, to hurt or to heal. The ego should be brought to judgment and found wanting there. Without your own alliance, without your own alliance, protection and love, the ego cannot exist. Let it be judged truly and you must withdraw alliance, protection and love from it. You are a mirror of truth in which God himself shines in perfect light. To the ego's dark glass, you need but say, I will not look there because I know these images are not true. Then, let the Holy One sign on you in peace, knowing that this and only this must be. His mind shone on you in your creation and brought your mind into being. His mind still signs on you and must sign through you. Your ego cannot prevent him from signing on you, but it can prevent you from letting him sign through you. The first coming of Christ is merely another name for the creation, for Christ is the Son of God. The second coming of Christ means nothing more than the end of the ego's rule and the healing of the mind. I was created like you in the first, and I have called you to join with me in the second. I am in charge of the second coming, and my judgment, which is used only for protection, cannot be wrong because it never attacks. Yours may be so distorted that you believe I was mistaken in choosing you. I assure you, this is a mistake of your ego. Do not mistake it for humility. Your ego is trying to convince you that it is real and I'm not, because if I'm real, I'm no more real than you are. That knowledge, and I assure you that it is knowledge, means that Christ has come into your mind and healed it. I do not attack your ego. I do walk with your high mind, the home of the Holy Spirit, whether you are asleep or awake, just as your ego does with your lower mind, which is its home. I'm your vigilance in this because you are too confused to recognize your own hope. I'm not mistaken, your mind will elect to join with mine, and together we are invincible. You and your brother will yet come together in my name and your sanity will be restored. I raise the dead by knowing that life is an eternal attribute of everything that the living God created. Why do you believe it is harder for me to inspire the dispirited or to stabilize the unstable? I do not believe there that there is an order of difficulty in miracles. You do. I have called on you and you will answer. I understand that miracles are natural because they are expressions of love. My calling you is as natural as your answer and as inevitable. Thank you so much.